So let's take a look at the opening. Okay, this is very common way for people to be playing their games now. Um, it seems that if you jump into the 3-3 uh, you're okay uh, as far as computer programs are concerned. And it's very common when both players have played a lot of star points like this. I, I, might, I better change the, game, the names. Let's see. Okay, uh, SBW0302 is, in Twitch is asking, are most top Go tournaments elimination brackets, or they're also Swiss tournaments or round robins? So, um, for amateur games, um, or tournaments in Europe or America, there's a lot of Swiss tournaments. So, um, there's a tendency to have a lot of players playing on a short schedule, like playing on the whole tournament in one day or something. And so... Um, they use, in amateur tournaments in Japan also, they use a lot of the Swiss system. So uh, that's one thing. Um, most pro tournaments are knockouts. Um, in these invitation tournaments, they do have a limited number of players. So they like to do it in the knockout, the elimination tournament system. Um, there are a number of uh, Japanese tournaments. There are three Japanese tournaments, that, which are the three biggest prize money tournaments, the Kisei and the Meijin and the Hoinbo, um, which are elimination throughout most of the tournament. And when they've got it down to something like eight to ten players, depending on which tournament I'm talking about, um, then they start around. Actually, um, the Kisei has more than ten players now. I think it has... Two round robin leagues uh, with six players each, if I remember correctly. So they have a limited number of players and they have a round robin. Um, or in the case of the Kisei tournament, it's two round robins. Oh, actually, they changed the Kisei tournament again. Yeah, but yeah, there was a, p a period of time when they were doing it that way. Um, they Now they still have multiple round robin type leagues. There's... Um, the Kisei tournament system is a bit complicated, so I won't get into that right now. Um, so we do have round robins. Um, not very much of Swiss tournaments in Japan. Or in most of Asia, actually. The, the, the associations don't seem to like them very much. Right, uh, Hikaru no Go. Um, you mean the, an the anime, right? Uh, most of those are constructed games, so there's, um, they're not actually, some of them are uh, real games. Um, there's actually a, a scene uh, from a game that, um, oh no, that was not, 
I, I think there might be some real professional games in them, but mostly they're um, they're made up. Okay, so black is cut there. Let's just back off. I, I haven't done any much very much commenting on this game, have I? Okay, so here, um, black plays a pincer and white takes the upper right corner. Uh, this move that white plays in the upper right corner, we saw it in uh, Shinjinso's game also. So it's a really important move, which gets rid of, um, for instance, these other moves that black can do. Like if black plays something like this, then black has this Joseki here. Uh, and it sort of depends on this ladder. If the ladder is good for black, sometimes it's okay. It depends on the direction black wants to develop also. Or black can do it differently with a double hane. So if black does a double hane with this move, again, it's going to sort of depend on the ladder. Here. So if the ladder is good for black, this is generally a good variation for black. In this case, uh, the ladder favors white. So it, maybe it's not working so... If the ladder favors white, it's a bit more difficult to handle that stone, the cutting stone at five. So this stops that, getting a, a good territory, which I would say is close to 15 points on the in the upper right, and it's taking away the eyes from Black's wall. So usually Black... Like, I, I would have a tendency to want to answer that by playing some kind of a local move just to reinforce this Black group. Um, but people don't do that. Top pros don't seem to like to do that. And so it's, it's all to do with uh, the score the computer gives you, of course. So this, it looks like it's a fairly even opening with black um, controlling the lower right area. And a lot is going to depend on how or when white invades that later in the game. And white invaded here. Um, I'd say another invasion point would be, for instance, something like this. Um, just erasing the lower side. Um, you don't actually see computer programs suggesting going into the corner very much. So, like, uh, white does have moves like this, which would potentially live in the corner. So if black plays here, uh, white does have some potential to make a living shape there. Um, but when the outside is still in the middle of the fight, um, sometimes you, you don't see computer programs suggesting this move very much for white. So this is a bit unusual too, and black just allowed it. I think this is okay for black. And now black is starting to attack in the lower left. This whole thing, it's a Joseki sequence. And white is alive on the right here. So in this variation, um, both sides have fairly solid positions. Um, so black has a territory now in the lower right corner, and it's going to be difficult for white to invade the lower side in general because black has such a solid position. So black would be thinking of adding, for instance, a stone somewhere around, um, somewhere around here, um, and white would have a lot of difficulty coming in after that. Okay, so when white plays here, I'm not sure what white was going to do next. Um, but white could, I mean, if black answers it, but white could be thinking of playing something, um, this would not really be forcing, but maybe here, or maybe something underneath. I don't think I would be thinking of going any deeper than that with white, because it would be very, in this board position, when black's so strong on the right, it's probably dangerous. And the fact that white's weak on the left side, too. So black... Uh, ignored it, and that's something black can do because this black group already has a good position towards the left side. The white moyo on the top is big too. Yes, um, it's very big, but it's it's not it's not going to make into territory very easily. Okay, um, so black is cut here. And so, obviously, if white plays an Atari from above, black can play a cut on the second line. So that's uh, that's the threat here. 
And this would be just bad for white. So white probably plays underneath and black will extend. So this is the fight that we can expect. Um, so let's see. White has more than 10 points on the right side. Um, more than 10 points on the top. I mean the upper right. And the rest is hard to say. Black has something like 15 points just in the lower right corner. And then a few points on the left. So the territory, it's pretty close. And it just depends on what happens to these open areas on the top and the bottom sides. I'd say the game is pretty much fairly close. We have to remember it's a seven and a half point Komi Chinese rules. So um, I would think that that gives White uh, a bit of a start lead, a lead in the beginning of the game. 